Hi folks, uh, Dr. Mudassir here with one more episode of the Supply Chain Show. As you know, I discuss in my show the hot topics, the topics you want to listen and you want to know about. So I recently did a survey on LinkedIn and I asked about uh, when it comes to supply chain strategy of 2021, what are your top three problems, right? Or what is your top three priorities as such? So I give the options of visibility, uh, improve visibility, improve velocity or reduce variability. So out of a one at uh, 1,108 people, which is a, you know more than 1,100 people, it's a, lot of, it's a, it's a big number it's, uh, in terms of voting, right? They have 71% have voted visibility. So whenever I go into any supply chain, uh, let's go to seminars or talks or, you know, the visibility is definitely one of the let's call it biggest problems, and on the other hand, opportunity for improvement. Because what we want to do as a supply chain people, we want to basically, basically manage information, to manage basically material flow, to manage the, the money flow, right? So now, so when I talk about visibility, so one of the hot topic or hot keywords uh, around the topic is control towers, right? And I get very intrigued and I Googled it and I found uh, one of my friend here or the subject matter experts, I'll say, is Gabriel Verna, right? He is a vice president of uh, MIS Solution Advisory, Blue Yonder, who was one of the leading providers of the supply chain solution, right? So with that introduction, hello, Gabriel, how are you? Hello, yeah, not too bad, thank you. Right, I'll give you a brief introduction, maybe just see, I know we did the episode on SNOP and IBP, which actually people really like it. So again, I just want to give you a thank you and a compliment for your basically giving your expertise. So what happens is that episode and now just please briefly touch base and then we'll jump into the topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just very, very briefly. So Gabriel Vanna is the name. Indeed, uh, I look after the solution advisory practice for, for Blue Yonder and EMEA. Um, yeah. And I've been playing in this uh, space for supply chain uh, planning and supply chain management for probably the last 20 years. Um, and yeah, a little bit in software uh, uh sorry a little bit in software uh, implementation uh, also a little bit in sales but the vast majority actually really in the solution advisory space uh, when it's uh, really about trying to help uh, customers to understand their uh, how their requirements map to capabilities and how those capabilities then in return can create a, a business outcome and an according value for uh, the customer so that's what i do that's what great. I do with my team and I still enjoy and I probably will enjoy for a while. <laughs> great, great, great. So I recently heard Blue Yonder has been acquired by Panasonic. So again, mm -hmm. great congratulations to Blue Yonder team. So with that, with that said, let's start. For example, I'm absolutely novice. I've got no idea what a supply chain control tower is, right? So mm -hmm. let's start with the definition and a bit of history. Just explain, explain what you think. Yeah. So I think we need to almost take a step back in the sense of control tower is, is a term that has been used a lot uh, in, in different meanings, um, right? So in the logistics space, uh, control towers have, have been around for a while and they, they mainly focus around, uh, you know, the, the visibility around what's happening with transportation. Uh, also in planning context, that term has been used um, and it is, has been more used uh, in the sense of being able to create transparency uh, when it comes to forward looking through through planning, essentially. Uh, I've also encountered Control Tower as an organizational entity. So companies would actually call a team uh, a Control Tower that looks after uh, creating transparency and visibility uh, in the supply chain. So all, and I'm not going to say that any of these isn't valid, right? They're all uh, sort of valid definitions. Uh, most more, more recently, I think what is emerging is the idea that a control tower is more holistic and more end-to-end -end, uh, when it comes to uh, providing visibility and transparency uh, for a supply chain. So in a sense, um, it has become, um, yeah, if, if, you, if you will, uh, more, yeah, more a technology issue rather than also almost a functional issue, right? Uh, if we if we think back, um, we will probably look in our own archives uh, of uh, ideas around how could we create that that type of, uh, of visibility. Uh, we would probably find that uh, already 20 years ago we'd have that idea, we'd have that concept, but the technology wasn't there yet. So uh, 
visibility players have been been around for a while, but have always been very sort of limited by what's possible technically. But this is what really has changed in the last uh, sort of five years uh, with the emergence of cloud and the ability to ingest uh, large, uh, large amounts of data uh, into cloud environments, uh, uh, fast changing data in nature, keep it memory resident, make it available and, uh, and, and, and able to interrogate uh, in an easy, easy fashion. So that is, is sort of the new thing here or the new element that makes uh, this type of application uh, now a reality and now possible. And in a simple sense, it, it really, I mean, it answers one of the most basic questions that very many organizations still struggle a lot. It's the basic question of what's happening in my supply chain right now. Right? And um, yeah, so today companies will go to many different sources of information, maybe their ERP box to get some inventory, uh, you know, maybe their planning system to get some idea about what's going to happen downstream or upstream. Uh, and, uh, you know, trying maybe, maybe if they have a transportation system, get something from there and then try to bring it all into like a BI tool, a, 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 you know, a, a business warehouse, a, a reporting environment. Uh, but by the time they got it all in there, the information is already stale again, mm -hmm. right? And doesn't necessarily represent what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. So that in a nutshell is, is what I would look um, look at when I think about control tower. No, thank you. Thank you for the definition. I think you 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 said two things which uh, right on my, you know, of my interest. For example, you know, when you say, you know, what is happening in the supply, supply chain right now? And that is the biggest problem with the container being delayed right now. Uh, nobody knows, you know, if you book the container, it might be three weeks delay, four weeks delay. We have got no idea, right? And this is happening. One of the biggest problems we have right now, right? Even though you, that four weeks delay, you only find out that it's late, which is, when you actually start chasing support, right? So we'll come mm -hmm. come back to that that a problem statement which you have uh, very nicely defined. I, I, I think actually three years ago I wrote a blog, you know, uh, seven supply chain emerging technological trends. So, so I mentioned cloud. So recently I shared again, and somebody asked me this question. So I, I mentioned about three D printing, IoT, you know, blockchain, cloud, all that gamification, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So somebody asked me this question: uh, Which of if I have a choice to focus on one? and really press on to, let's call it, drive it, which one I should choose. And I said, I will pay, definitely pick cloud, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, that, and, and I want to spend about two minutes with you understanding how cloud computing has enabled, in terms of, let's call it, technology infrastructure, right? To, to help the, let's call it, software providers, uh, providers and developers like you to create tools which can help him, you know, in terms of uh, the visibility. Just uh, give me your two minutes synopsis in terms of technological advancement. Yeah. So cloud, in, in particular, public cloud, uh, gives access to um, two things, right? One thing is, is of course, computational power, uh, basically when you need it. So the whole uh, idea of elasticity um, uh, when, when you need to access more computational power. I mean, there's folks who think about computational power like, uh, like electricity. Like we're all used to just, you know, plugging in uh, you know, our, our devices into the plug in the wall to get power, electrical power. In a similar sense, this is how we should start thinking about computational power uh, when we look at the sort of near future. Um, so that is is a, a core a paradigm, I think, uh, for, from a cloud perspective, that, that sort of computational power and that sort of instant availability and the ability to upscale, downscale the way uh, a business process uh, requires it from a support perspective. Um, the, the second aspect is the ability of, um, through that type of infrastructure and the multi-tenant aspect of uh, sharing infrastructure, uh, that also gives rise to new technologies, to different type of um, architectures, uh, all going all in on the API economy, going all in on microservices, uh, because that allows you then to, to build um, application and to stick uh, the appropriate technology uh, behind the application, uh, which then really allows new capability and also allows the new capability at the performance that the users would expect. Um, for example, since we're talking about control towers, uh, the ability to um, ingest these these large amounts of external data uh, in a in a controlled fashion, you know, line it up and align it with the internal data and create a, a picture that is then uh, possible to interrogate. Um, through search mechanisms, Elastic, uh, for example, is a, is a great example here. 
um, to use uh, from a technology perspective, uh, you know, Kafka from an ingestion perspective, um, and, and then keep all that information in a uh, memory resident environment, uh, which again allows uh, allows um, ease of access. So those are those are things that uh, that cloud really enables for us, and it kind of democratizes the the access to to the information. Okay, no, no, that, that's great. Thank thank you for explanation. So I know you have your own cloud product, right? In um, in Blue Yonder, right? So mm -hmm. let's uh, give us a bit bit of history when you started, and I'm mm -hmm. sure because personally I have not seen all. I mean uh, any control towel application. So I'm sure yeah. the, I'm, I'm myself is very interested if you kindly show us and I'm sure that SIM do your followers would be very interested to show your product, the features, how it works. So if you, if you can uh, be very kind to show us, please. Yes. And just start with yeah, the sure. history when you started. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll share my screen in a second, um, uh, just to answer the, uh, the beginning of your question. So history of, of this uh, product in particular is um, essentially in uh, early 2018 is is when we said, okay, now now is the time to yeah. to build this. Uh, you know, the, the technology is is ready. Um, conceptually, as I said, um, the idea is it's been in our archives uh, before. Um, and then in uh, May 2018, our first client signed up for this, uh, and uh, then in November 2018, we went live. So this is remarkable, right? Because we're looking at a roughly a six month period, which for enterprise software is, you know, generally a you know a good achievement if you just talk about an implementation. Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about uh, creating the product as we go, right? As we implement. So we created it um, uh, in conjunction with uh, you know our, our customer, who um, you know of course was a, a great contributor um, in that in that uh, co development. Um, but it's again to, to your earlier question. That's only possible in the cloud era. That's only possible in an agile uh, deployment and development approach with that type of technology um, and that's now available to us. So yeah, let me let me start sharing uh, my screen. Can you see this? Oh, first time, first time <laughs> of everything. Right? Never seen never seen one before. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so the, I mean, this is a I can see the map. What's happening? Yeah, so this is, of course, a, you know, the map view is always a, a, a very popular view. There's different ways of sort of starting uh, starting the day. So one is indeed the, the one we're looking at, uh, which the idea is you have a map view. Of course, it could be also just a, you know, a subset of the world, um, whatever you're interested in. I mean, obviously, uh, you can uh, you can just zoom in and it goes to the nth degree of, uh, of the underlying um, map material, which um, since we're working on Microsoft Azure is, is Bing, as you can see here in the uh, bottom left uh, corner. Uh, we're seeing several things. Um, so at the moment, what we've selected is down here in this box, it's selected on in-transit shipments. Um, and it tells me here, there are five who have missed a stop. There's one who's, that is late. There's 33 that are delayed. So there's a difference between late and delayed. And I'll like, explain in a minute. Uh, 10 uh, that actually come early and 81, the majority is, is on time. So that's, that's very nice. Uh, so that's if I'm interested in shipments. I could also be very interested in how is my inventory doing in terms of location. So now I'm shifting the focus away from transportation towards uh, the inventory in my location. I can see, aha, I got a bunch of stockouts. I got expired lots. If I am, have uh, perishable items, uh, I may have low stock. Um, there could be a lot that is about to expire. Uh, that gives me already a little hint. Maybe that's an area where I need to do something. And also overstock. I could also look at capacity. So it's not just um, um, the material angle of it. It's also the capacity angle. So I can see that I have uh, facilities with, um, that are overutilized or um, throughput is overutilized. Um, or storage that is underutilized. So I get um, you know a bunch of information about the sort of health state of my supply chain in a, in a, in a glimpse. Uh, another popular starting view is um, not the map view, but you know, just a, a dashboard, right? And here it's effectively, we're accessing similar information and it's really down to individual uh, preferences that I, okay, I might be a dashboard person. Of course I can, you know, um, you know, have, have influence on how the dashboard is set up, what information is being displayed so that I can, um, you know, tailor the day of the life uh, to myself and my own preferences. 
you know, a third way to interact is is the idea of alerts, right? So we are also deploying um, not just the pure visibility aspect, but there's also conditionality around it that we can use to drive, um, you know, uh, users' attentions to things that could go wrong in their supply chain. Um, so for example, I got an alert here that talks about a stock out at a particular location that has a certain severity, you know, which could my which could draw my attention to this. So yeah, as I said earlier, there. There always is a bit of a difference between um, you know, a late shipment and a delayed shipment. So late is already happened. It's in the past, it has happened, it was late. Delayed is actually forward looking in that sense. Um, and it's, expect it's expecting um, something is going to be late when it comes to the expected time of arrival. So we can, we can go through a little uh, example here. So let's pick any of these. Let's pick this guy here. You, you see when I hover here, what happens is mm. everything else sort of morphs into the background. And I see here a shipment that, you know, origins from my Belgium supplier with a certain ship date. Um, and it goes to uh, through Antwerp port, um, then through the port of Philadelphia into a, an RDC a, a, a distribution center in Virginia. And it is, it is delayed. And you can see here um, in the top right corner of this little pop-up box, it shows me I got one container of the, on the shipment. Mm -hmm. And in this container, you see the little flame. The, there's some hot item in there, right? There's a hot item in there, exactly. Yeah. So the, the hot item indeed is the idea of, uh, you know, not every delay, or mm -hmm. even if it's a future projected delay, will have mm -hmm. an impact on my supply chain, because that's what I got safety stock for. That's why I'm buffering. Um, that's why I'm working on, you know, all these programs about uh, resilience in the supply chain that, you know, COVID has taught us we need to, mm -hmm. you know, maybe pay a little bit more attention to. Um, so that was just coincidence. I could actually filter for that here, right? So I can trigger, uh, toggle this on and it now has actually re re removed all the delayed shipments. You know, we had 33 here earlier on. Uh, that, that don't have hot items. So now it only shows me those that, you know, a delay is actually causing an issue. You can also overlay other things like, um, you know, weather information um, and see if, if I, maybe I can correlate some of this, uh, that maybe my delays are indeed weather related. Um, but what I would probably do is I would probably just start to investigate. So let's just do that. So I can do more than just click here, right? Or hover here. I can actually click and then what pops up here on the right side of the screen is a little bit more detail. So it shows me again, coming from Belgium through Antwerp, Philadelphia, Virginia. And then you notice um, two, two um, dates here, right? It says the PTA, which is the predicted time of arrival yeah. versus yeah. the ETA, which is what I had planned to do. So the ETA may have been based on the schedules of the ship or, you know, whatever, or whatever means of transportation it, it is. We, of course, support, uh, you know, all the, uh, all the modes, uh, including, uh, you know, air, truck, um, and, of course, uh, ship. Um, but here we see uh, the PTA is the 9th of June. The ETA, the, the previously planned time, uh, was the 6th of June. So the good news is um, today... Um, which is somewhere here around the middle of May, I already know in the middle of May that my arrival time here is going to be five days later than planned. And I already know that three weeks in advance or four weeks in advance. So you start to see where the value emerges. If I had to, if I would only find out closer to the event or actually on the day, on the 6th of June, that my shipment isn't there, isn't coming, what am I going to do, mm -hmm. right? I have very little degree of freedom then to react in time. But now I know it six, uh, sorry, or, or five weeks uh, in, in advance. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got a ton of time. I can allow myself to react thoroughly to this and not hastily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can plan a shipment production or, or, or custom, most importantly, customer promises, right? That's the main part, yeah. I might, I might, exactly, I might re revisit what I have promised to my clients, or in this yeah. case, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a customer, uh, sorry, a consumer level product. Um, so I might have to talk to, uh, you know, my retail partner. I, I think it's look, it looks. Uh, I'm sure you can, um, 
you can show me more stuff on uh, I'll, I'll be looking but when i look into this i've got two two straight away comments first of all the ux and ui is brilliant i mean seriously it's very intuitive it's very good so that's very impressive in in, in uh, i mean impressive stuff to see i mean you probably don't need training someone like us to just you know click and start playing but yeah, the, the biggest yeah. the, the biggest question come to my my mind is i think all what's happening in supply chain right now you know is it's 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 you talking to your i mean let's look at the information available there so you are your information related to your warehouses you have a in, information related to your actually inventory management which is your own let's call it erp information warehouse mm-hmm. could be different wms system information and your internal shipment is definitely you you have to gather this information from your shipping line your mask or your you know hapag line and all those people right so you need to somehow so what i'm thinking how your 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 control tower is basically attaining or gathering those information from all different let's call it systems and mm-hmm. making it available uh yeah making it available for us to see in a you know very nice see the dashboard or a map view so how easy or difficult the integration is that's my first question and the second mm-hmm. is the level of reliability of the information so yeah maybe if you can explore explain that before we explore a bit more let's call it functionality of the tool yeah yeah sure so from a from a data ingestion perspective it is of course as you said the the data that you own yourself as a as a user of this um you can we can we can grab that data from the uh, existing system landscape um and then of course from a reliability perspective uh, you know everyone has an idea about how reliable the data are and in fact data and data availability and readiness is a key element of a deployment project uh, of control tower and uh, what we have observed with our um customers in this space is uh, it has actually a positive impact on data quality in general if you go through a project um like this now um having said that of course we have to then correlate the internal information with external information uh, primarily with uh, location data and, and shipment data so for example uh it's not so uh easy um to do this so we actually offer multiple methods of getting that information in we we work with um other uh external data aggregators as a, a source of this information we also work with um um 4PL and 3PL companies directly and we can also onboard and ha- already have onboarded um many of those uh, carriers ourselves and we keep onboarding as 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 we go um to be able to uh, ingest all that information about about the location and then basically what what's happening is you start correlating that information so for example if you have information uh, about uh, a shipment and what's in the container and you also have the information on which ship that com- container is all you then need is the information on where the ship is and you bring those together you know exactly where your container is right so that's uh, that's uh, exactly what's uh, uh what's happening here so from a reliability perspective we um see typically in a deployment um that you have a bit of a ramp up uh at the beginning um until you have sort of it's a good old crawl walk run type uh, type thinking uh that you you get uh, better at um obtaining information in a reliable fashion and then obviously the reliability in in what's being displayed for you in the control tower uh is is rising alongside with with that right 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 so that's big so so you can integrate with the erp systems and all that that's that's not a problem okay sure that sounds yes. that yes. sounds that sounds fantastic no and that's i mean that's the advantage of you know bringing this uh, capability to the market as as blue yonder i mean as you know we're we're a fairly uh, you know big company and we have you know many many implementations of all sorts of our solutions with mm-hmm. the the typical big erp providers mm-hmm. uh, as as the back end system so that's that's really like a bread and butter type stuff type business to you know integrate to these systems and right. get information and also write write back uh, where wherever the process requires yeah. I mean, so can I see like things like okay, if I have a different because I can see the inventory and location. So if I want to move inventory around different plants and locations, mm-hmm. can I can I do that? I mean, if you got that level of integration, I would like to think so. You can, right? I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, let's 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 continue our little flow here, right? So we yeah. were looking at this shipment, 
Um, and we were stuck here where we said, okay, we already realized that's going to be five days late, but that's going to be five days late in June. And now we have um, the end of May. Um, so let's look at what's called more details. So what just happened is I just clicked on that and it directly went through to the details of the shipment. So in the top of the screen, we see some more uh, detailed information. You know, what's the mode? Who's the supplier? Where is it going to? What's the number of containers, country of origin, etc. So all that information. And I can see, aha, uh -huh, all I, uh, sorry, hot items. There's this one hot item, right, on the container. So the next thing I would do is I would investigate, okay, if that, what, what is that item? Okay, so it's the Belgium waffle maker. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I can then also see more details on that. So what I now start to see is, is a projection. Let me show. Sorry. Um, let me drill through to the item itself um, to get to the inventory details. So what we see now is this, right? So we see a projection, and this is a typical sort of inventory projection that we would be familiar with from. Uh, you know, a, a, a planning system just as well. Uh, where we're basically saying, uh, here's the, the projected um, availability. So I'm actually in an overstock situation earlier. I have, you can see down here, here's my planned arrival. So that's um, assuming the ETA, you know, would happen, uh, which would normally mean actually here is where I should be able to bring that back up because I, I see my demands, I see my consumption, I get down below my uh, safety stock, and then it's not coming, right? Because I see now here, the planned arrival would be here, but the predicted arrival is out here, right? Yeah. So I only uh, a lot later we'll get back into, well, again, actually here into overstock uh, for that matter. But you see, I have one, two, three, four, five days of projected undercover. Mm -hmm. So what I could do now is I could now start to say, okay, what if I, you know, maybe look at another location and see, okay, look, these guys over in Pennsylvania, they got enough stuff. And I could, you know, start a workflow and see if I can do a, a transfer, uh, a transfer order. Or I actually, this is, depends a little bit on, you know, process definitions and things like that. But from a capability perspective, we then also offer what's called a resolution, right? So here, uh, basically what the system does it starts to propose transfer shipments, transfer orders, and uh, figures out you know what you could do in order to rectify the situation here, wow. without creating another situation you know somewhere else. Wow. So it it, it helps um, with that. And again, it's a matter of then how do you integrate with your existing processes? You know, create a stock transfer order in the ERP box. That would then be the consequence if you have accepted the resolution. So yeah, so that's, uh, Pretty much that's it, a, a way of sort of dealing with this. With so if this. you if you want to move the stock around, and you, so where are you gonna do the? Where's the call to action? You can do it here, or you have to go into ERP and do it. You can do it. So somewhere. it's it's as you wish, right? You can do it here if you want to. So that would be using using the resolution. Right. Uh, someone has played here, so this one's been canceled. Um, you can click on here um, and accept it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accept the resolution. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. I know there's a lot more functionalities, and but again, we already uh, I think spent a bit of time, and I think I would again get this very nice dashboard. You got supply, demand, and capacity. So we probably won't be able to cover in the in the time we have. But I've got few few questions there, right? So mm -hmm. okay, I like it. I like the demo. I, I'm interested to 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 get on board. So mm -hmm. what happened then? I mean, what, I mean, it's can I can I have it because you know I don't want maybe I have already a few other systems and I don't want, do not want full blue on the supply chain suite as such. I just want to have this application. Can I can mm -hmm. I do that or it comes with the package of everything else? No, no, you can. I mean, we we are embracing the um, you know as we talked about cloud as a concept earlier on and the. Yeah the API economy and the idea of being more um, services and microservice on oriented. So um, this, this can be um, used as a, a solution as it is in conjunction right. with the existing landscapes, no problem. Right. Um, if you, I mean, we, we actually offer a, a trial for this on, right. on the Blue Yonder website. So wow. anyone who's interested can, can go to blueyonder.com and um, it, if, if it requires just a little uh, registration um and then you can basically you can they can use it as a 
SaaS platform if they want. Yeah, start. exactly. So it's, it is a SaaS. It is a SaaS solution. So you can, uh, yeah, you can get on, uh, you know, do a trial, uh, play with it for for thirty days, and you know, if you like it, uh, subscribe. Right? Subscribe. Okay. So they, they're talking about subscribe. So I liked it. I subscribed it, but I I feel it takes a bit of onboarding, right? It's I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it's just like tedious. It's it's like any uh, very painful ERP implementation that is gonna take six months of UTA testing, four months of deployment, and somebody gonna come and charge me ten thousand dollars per day for de- is it is gonna be that ridiculously expensive? Or or I mean, how easy is the onboarding on of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the so the way we go about the the, the projects is. Um, uh, in a in an agile fashion and in a use case oriented fashion. So right. typically, what would be part of a project is some form of um, analysis upfront, where we say, okay, what what exactly is it that you actually want to try and achieve with this? Where where does lack of visibility hurt you the most today? Mm-hmm. Right. So that we can really start there and identify maybe let's say the top five use cases that you mm-hmm. require a, a, a control tower for mm-hmm. get those going um in, a, in your five six sprints mm-hmm. um and that doesn't keep you from then adding a, a six or seven or eight use case at a later stage mm-hmm. and just add a few more sprints whenever you you know you have the capacity and the time to yeah, yeah, yeah. um to do that and yeah most of our existing control, control tower projects are exactly like that you know the uh the um the the appetite comes while eating is something we say in Germany. I'm not sure <laughs> I'm yeah, not sure yeah, how well yeah, that yeah, translates, yeah, yeah. but um, it, it's something that's very typical. Then you know once um, this is seen, more use cases emerge. This is where some you know good uh, pro- uh, project or program management is required to make yeah. sure you don't have a scope uh, creep. Uh, you know early on um, uh, to make to make sure you actually deliver on those initial use cases. Because that also helps you then internally from a change management perspective and right, from an right. adoption perspective. If right. you can actually go back to your peers and say, look, okay, with the first use case is now live and working. Hey, next month is already the second use case going live, uh, because that's the kind of pace you would you would typically see in these agile projects. Right, right. So if you guys just unshare your screen, I just want to you know have a chat with you just to you know mm-hmm. uh, go take up a conversation to the to the end of it. So I'm sure you deployed to this solution to certain customers and stuff. So without, I mean, you can name the customer, you choose not to name the customer, it's perfectly mm-hmm. fine. So what is the, let's call it the effect before and after? Because my, see, my theoretical view is this, that you deploy this, it will solve less, as I said, out of 1108 people, 71 people, person of, you know, of, of that content, more than 700 people said, or more than 750 people, people said, you know, visibly, I want to prove it. I can see that's happening. You can plan better. You can tell your customer you're late. You can move stock. Uh, or maybe if something's coming early, you can reschedule the production planning, mm-hmm. customer promises. It, it will, you know, I think it could also act a very great, let's call it end-to-end value stream mapping tool. Because when we talk about supply chain maturity, we're talking about semi-integrated, then integrated internally, and then enterprise level solution. Because the, what we want to do as a supply chain people, we want to have the more enterprise level integration right and this tool mm-hmm. is giving us i think that visibility so from from your experience of your deployment to certain customers maybe just give us less like, top three biggest improvement on changes they felt um yeah. you don't have to name a customer if you, if you do it that would be good. No, i can i can i can name a few customers for uh, for example diageo or electrolux or Beckton dickinson i mean diageo uh, just just spoke on our user conference um uh, about their about their control tower project, and they made this awesome statement. They said that you know if you have control tower, it's like you can see your supply chain from space. Which <laughs> is pure coincidence that I that I chose this <laughs> this background uh, today. Um, so yeah, that's 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 what they say. Um, from a from a sort of value bucket perspective, what what is it that they can tangibly see uh, in terms of before and after it is um and it's i don't think it's a surprise right it, it is the buckets you would expect so this this has an impact on customer satisfaction uh right because you can manage your uh, your supply chain a lot better and you just said it, it helps you with better planning but i'm also going to add to that by saying it also helps you with better supply chain execution mm-hmm. all right because it allows you to make decisions in the execution horizon uh, that are of a better quality and therefore less have a, a lower or a, yeah less impact 
on uh, uh, on future planning as well, right? So there 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 is a definitely effect an effect on on both sides. So the other um, the other impacts, the other value buckets you would see is definitely also on inventory, right? So um, you make better use of your your buffer stocks um, if you have this in place. Um, so that's very tangible and measurable. Uh, and then also from a, a utilization perspective on the warehouses, uh, you have an impact. And uh, of course, on the utilization of transportation, you have uh, you have that impact. So those those are uh, the value buckets where you can uh, very tangibly see this. Uh, in fact, that's that's actually part of um, of what we do. We um, uh, will provide a value analysis upfront, mm -hmm. and we will also um, help you then identify post project. You know uh, what was it that you actually got out of it, so that it becomes um, you know a, a bit more. ROI sort of quantifiable. Do you have a proper ROI? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Gabriel, thank you very much. Yeah, you know, I never, as I said, I never saw a uh, uh, control tower before, and it's actually I find it slightly better than what I had in my in my head, right? So, so thank you very much for this. And I think there's a technology to go. Cloud solution is the technology to go for. Uh, visibility is one of our biggest problems. So I don't know if somebody was thinking how to improve visibility. Uh, how to you know inform if your shipment is late, better planning, better execution, better integration, better enterprise level integration with your customers and your suppliers. I, I think this is the technology to go. Again, uh, Gabriel, thank you very much for taking time for presenting. And I know it's not easy to you know find time for you, but again, you always come to the show. I think the best thing about you, you give us and you come in and you give us next level stuff, right? And this is what we want for SCM do the followers to do is to give something next level, right? So thank you very much for your time, for your demo. I've learned a lot. I'm sure the people have learned a lot. Uh, any final comments? No, just 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 thank you very much for giving me the the time, the opportunity to share this. Uh, maybe one last uh, thing I didn't, didn't mention that in the or didn't show that in the demo. It, uh, the controller, of course, reaches out um, sort of beyond the four walls of the own enterprise. You can, for example, connect your your upstream suppliers into it, um, and you know, use it as a as a collaboration platform as well. Right, right. And you are available on LinkedIn and stuff, right? So give us how um, people contact you. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Happy to, happy to, happy to. So I'm going to I'm going to tag you, uh, and I'm going to share this video. So please contact Gabriel or people in blue under. So this is, we're going to end here. So as usual, I say, if you like what we are doing with SM Dujo, you want to bring, you want me to bring more important content, you know, advanced content like we done this video. So please you know, let me know, leave your comments. So as usual, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much. And Gabriel, have a good night. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, keep it simple, keep it real. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave your comments below.